Hello again everyone and welcome to another video in my How to Draw Iconic Art series. Before we start of course, if you could subscribe that would be terrific, thank you very much. And also, if you want to know what's coming up next, ring that little bell icon, okay? Right, well the Iconic Art today is a detail from Picasso's famous painting Guernica which was painted in response to the German bombing of a Spanish village, a town, in 1937. And I'm going to draw a detail of this, and it's the central image, which is of a horse which is, with its mouth agape, it's been wounded. And above that, um, there is what looks like a large eye, uh, but of course it represent, can represent the flash of the bomb going off. Um, so what you do is, first of all, start by drawing the big curve on the top of the eye shape coming in like that. Okay, now underneath that, you see that? Kind of shallow lemon shape almost. And in the centre we have a light bulb shape, which kind of represents the eyeball and also the source of the light. And it got, what it does is just a kind of squiggle like that for the filament in the centre. Something like that. Okay? And around the outside of the eye shape, he draws the jagged shape, if you like, of the explosion. So you get these shapes coming up like that, kind of small at the top, and they come out larger at the sides, like that, okay, then back to this side again, you get a much longer one coming out to be there, coming back down to there, and then another one kind of joining that, coming underneath, like that, and the painting was done in black, white and grey, so I'm going to be doing a pencil drawing for you. And uh, that comes in like that, joins to that, another one comes up, and kind a of double one there, like that. And below this line here, you have, well these ones are going to be black, or rather white, but below that um, they're going to be some black shapes, jagged shapes as well. So one starts there. And this kind of double one here, there's one just below it, comes in about there. And then one like that, coming up to there. And then another one comes down from about here. And like that. Okay, so that's roughly the kind of shape of the the eye and the explosion. Okay, now below that we have the shape of the horse with its head up, its mouth agape. So first of all, I start with the outline of its head shape coming up like that, in that curve there. And at the top here we have its nose shape. Now he separates it out like that, and you see the nostrils in the centre. That shape, like a big coma almost. Okay, and separates that from the rest of the horse's head, with the line coming in like that. Just follow that line down there, see, so duplicate that line, coming around, and then what you get is almost a cartoon version of the, of the horse's mouth. A gape, like that. And in the mouth we have three great teeth, like that, okay, the mouth there, and in the centre of the mouth, the tongue and anguish jutting it almost like a spear point, like a dagger, a knife, okay, and that carries on down there, and then the mouth carries on round to here, and the bottom of the horse's chin, if you like, and then you have Four teeth now coming up from there. Okay, and you kind of repeat this line here. You get a loop coming around to there. And then from over here, there's a line that 
goes straight across and curved down towards the eyes just below this line here. And the eyes are on this line here. And you draw two big circles, one there, and then one there. But stop that circle there so it's open, right? And in the centre, draw another one and one in the centre. Same with that one there, you draw one there and one in the centre, okay? Those are the, the anguished looking eyes. Now, as this line comes up here, curves across and you get one ear, simplified ear coming, and then this ear, next ear, is more of a leaf shape, coming in like that, okay? With another double line there, and a line in the centre. And the back of the head comes down about here. And streaming out for that, you get simplified shapes, almost like flames, but they are part of the horse's mane. Okay? And at the bottom of the, the head here, it's almost as if he's drawing a skull as well, this, as if the horse is already dead and had been dead for a while. So you get this almost skull-like shape coming in there. And the rest, the bottom of the horse here comes up sharply like that. And that line's doubled up. Comes in there. And there's also a line from here, which comes up to join this line just below the eye here, and a curve. And then that's doubled up. And there's another, almost like a bone fragment coming in, like that. This is all going to be black in here. So that joins up into this shape, which curves round and goes over the top and curves back towards the back of the horse's head. And then that's a separate line there as well. So all these lines are going to be black, okay? And this line then curves around and becomes part of the horse's neck in here, like that. Just below that, there's a shape. Starts with a kind of circle and then comes straight down. It could be a fragment of something that's been blown apart, okay? And that continues down like that. And you get suggestions of the chest of the horse coming in there. And there's another line like that, another separate one. And that line follows through and you get a big curve below the horse's head. And it also splits up the background into various areas to accentuate the shapes that he's, that he's been painting. Okay? Um, now the back of the, the horse, the back of its neck rather, comes in a curve like that. So there's a horse's neck there, you see. And that kind of splits up as well, comes down at that angle there. And uh, then we have, again, we have more of the main shape coming out like that. Okay? And just coming into the picture here, you also have um, something, I suppose, which uh, corresponds to this here. It's a lamp, almost like it's the it's the lamp of reason coming in to enlighten all this madness that's going on. It's horror. Okay? And then you have a flame inside the lamp. With that there. And you have a line below it. Like that. And then the actual base of the lamp itself coming in. Held by, again, very simplified fingers that Picasso draws like that with the nail showing and the thumb comes in just below that there comes up and that goes in well that actually comes a bit further in because that appears there and the back of the hand appears coming in like that and then there's another finger coming in below that and another one coming in there okay and the back of the hand comes up like that. Okay, I'll sort that later. Right, come down to the bottom now, and uh, basically it's more or less all pattern here. We have a big kind of diamond shape just below that curve there, with a long kind of lozenge diamond shape, like that. Draw a line down the middle of it, and there are lines like that in it, and one coming down from there. And then over here, I'll take that out of the way, we have a shape like that, 
and below it another shape like that and along here if you imagine this parallel lines of marks that come along like that okay and they'll continue right along here and right along here and they carry on like that along, along the bottom and they stop about here there's the line that curves around like that a kind of double line and at the bottom here there are three lines that come up like that on there and like that and a few more of those lines cutting across that and along here we have another line that curves that way and across that line we have another kind of bent rectangular shape like that okay and actually the back of this I've drawn this too close this actually comes away over here like that more of a slope okay so I'll rub that out and I'll bring these closer in like that once I've done the Okay, well first of all I'm going to shade in the grey areas, okay? And then we'll move to the to the blacker ones. Um, now I'm using a 5B pencil, but eventually when I go to the more dense areas, I'll uh, be using 8B. Okay, so the grey areas are mainly around this here. So if I start by shading using the side of the pencil and getting a kind of grey tone like that, all the way around. Doesn't matter here if I go over the lines because I'm going to be colouring these ones in black anyway. Okay, so I'm going to colour, I'll shade in, you should say, all the way around here, like that. Now, this is a sketch, of course, so you get, uh, you want to get a kind of lively quality to it, a more rough looking sensation. Okay, so down here as well, but this is going to be white, so I have to be more careful when I come to the edges like that, okay? So I'm going to shade in right around here, right around here, okay? Right down to the bottom, and right around here. But as I come around here, this is going to get a, a bit darker. And I'll just show you what I mean. I'm going to put a bit more weight on my pencil, see how much darker that is? As I come up to this area here. But as I come around here, Take the weight off the pencil a bit and then blend it in to the grey area. See that? Okay, I'm going to continue doing the grey areas and I'll catch up with you when I've done that. Okay, I'm just finishing all these grey areas now and I'm going to move on to the black. Okay, so right around the top here, there's the jagged shapes. These are all black down to that line there. So again, to get that intensity, just put a lot of weight onto your, your 5B or 6B pencil, whichever dark pencil you're using. And always remember to use a bit of paper to keep uh, your artwork clean, because you don't want to smudge it all. You see the difference between that gray and the heavier blacky grey that I've got here. Not completely black, but it's uh, a lot more intense, of course, than the, the background colour. And you can, of course, go over these lines as well and, and toughen them up a bit like that. Okay? Right, I'm just finishing off the black shading on the jagged Explosion shape, okay. Like that. Then we'll move down to the horse and put in some of the black shapes here. The nostrils, for instance, they're black. Like that. And also, as I started shading in here, it's a bit darker. And as you come around the top of the open mouth, it's quite dark and it kind of then blends into a, a grey colour but there are also kind of lines coming across like that inside the horse's mouth again kind of almost like flame shapes but these are grey, these are left whitish okay 
Um, there is some shading within the actual shapes themselves, which I'll do at the end. Okay, uh, at the bottom we have, again, around the bottom of the teeth here, quite dark, comes up just halfway on the teeth like that. And then comes up and joins onto that line there. Remember that double line I drew? Well, that's black. Heads up towards the horse's eyes. Below that, this area in here is black, joining that one there. So that shades in quickly there, quite black. And there. And we move up to the eyes, and you find that this black shading joins onto the outside shape of this eye here. Like that, and then continues between these two parallel lines here into the kind of dark shapes of the mane that's streaming out behind the top of the horse's head here. Like that. And the centre of the eye is black. Like that. Okay, the outside line of this one is black, and then black in the centre, you get those staring eyes, okay? This ear has three triangles, and one in the centre like that, one on the other side. And then this outside shape here, that's very dark as well, coming in like that, okay? This whole area down here is black, so we start from here. And start to shade that in. That will continue right along here, around here. And also these edge bits here are black. That's black. So is that, and that, and these two shapes here. So I'll do them, and we'll catch up with you when I'm finished. Right, I'm just uh, finishing off this last black shape here. And again, you know, you can make your pencil lines quite free like that, quite sketchy. Up here, of course, we have um, the main streaming out, and that is black as well. Remember that line was joining in like that, comes up behind the fingers here. It joins in like that, so you get the points of the main streaming out behind the line of the neck, like that. Okay, now as I mentioned earlier, there is some shading within the shapes, especially in the horse's head. So you get this line here, and you get a bit of shading. Again, use your pencil quite lightly, it comes up like that, and a few more heavy strokes there. Oh, I forgot to put that line in between that, like that. Okay, and also in between here, you put, just to delineate the shape of the, the nostrils. Okay, and along here, a bit more shading around there. Also in here, comes up most of the way and then kind of tapers off towards the, the tip. A bit just below there, another one here. And then kind of accentuating the almost at the eyebrows of the horse, you get these bits of shading coming in. Like that, and also a bit of a shadow under the ear there. And then down the back of the neck, we have almost kind of that kind of curly shape there. So basically, you can draw it in lightly and then just shade up to your lines. There's another shape coming down like that. So you shade in like that, and also the back part of the neck. Some shading there. Okay, and a bit coming across there. Right, now, what you can do now is to take uh, an 8B pencil, as I suggested at the beginning, and go over some of the dark areas if you don't think they are dark enough. But looking at that, I think they are pretty dark. Uh, you know, look what happens when you go over with this, like the 8B. See, it becomes much more dense. So you can, if you like, just thicken up some of your dark areas, and of course go over some of your lines if you like, with the darker pencil, and especially the outlines, and that makes them stand out even more, like that, accentuates them, and there, 
like that. Okay, and these are pretty black, so I think I'll just leave them the way they are. Right, well that gives you an idea, I hope, of Picasso's wonderful anti-war painting of Guernica. Aha, uh -huh. and I hope you can join me again for another tutorial. But in the meantime, of course, all the best and happy drawing.